Hey guys, thank you for watching. Um, during this video, I would like to show you a possible setup for a warehouse on Microsoft uh, Fabric. Um, I'm a SQL guy, so I'll be focused on the SQL end of things. So I'll be using the SQL endpoint. I'll be using SQL queries to uh, query historical changes. And I'll be writing SQL queries for the uh, fact and dim tables because I'm going to build a data mart or a dimensional model on top of the data warehouse in this case. So you can go both ways on Microsoft Fabric. You can go lake house, medallion setup, uh, like, like you see here, like the bronze, silver, gold, and you use uh, notebooks and PySpark and Python scripts to just prep data and then store it again as files and then uh, build views on top of those. And then, but you know, I'm a SQL engineer. I would like to just, I would love to do things in SQL. And uh, that's actually what I did. So I did create a uh, warehouse framework which you can easily use to generate historical tables. Uh, and those historical tables will be based on the uh, SQL endpoint um, from the lakehouse files, actually. So first things first, let's zoom in on, onto the lakehouse. Um, as you can see here, a couple of folders. So the, this setup is following the medallion principle. It's bronze, silver, and gold. So the bronze would be uh, the raw, the landing folder, so to say. And then if you uh, expand this one, you can see there are four sources right now. And um, during this demo, you know, focus on the adventure works. Um, I have a couple of files in the root folder. Those will be processed by an ADF pipeline later on. And as you can see here, there's an, also an archive folder. So I'm actually moving the files as soon as I've processed them, which is, of course, not the way it should be if you, uh, you know, uh, read about delta tables and stuff like that. Um, but in practice, I do know that there are just, you know, more practical examples and not everything fits in one box, so to say. So, and it's just a, a setup. So it's one of the many possibilities how you can set things up. And of course, you can append an existing Delta file or override it and, and leave the file there and use petitions. Um, but this is just another method of accomplishing things. So um, just about the lake, the lake house, let's just process these files. And then in the meantime, uh, I'm going to explain more about the warehouse. So I'm going to dive into the daily run pipeline, which is my main pipeline. Um, I use a notebook to process all the uh, lake house files, and it will turn these files into delta tables. And then these delta tables will be uh, read by a store procedure in the warehouse. And that store procedure will determine um, if there are any changes, interest updates and deletes. And then, uh, of course, build historical table on top of that one. And then uh, it will move the files to the archive folder as shown before uh, a couple of uh, minutes back. And then in the end, we're also going to process a data mart. So we're going to uh, process a couple of fact tables, a couple of DIM tables. Um, they're currently copying data or they're, they're querying stuff and they're exporting the data again into a new uh, physical table, so to say. I know that in, uh, you know, in the, the latest news, the latest blogs and articles that you read is that you, know, you don't want to copy things a lot. Um, but looking from a practical example, uh, I have a lot of customers with like 100 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes of data. Um, and I know from a fact that if you use views on top of views on top of views with sub queries using views and inner joins and cross supply with views, at some point something will break and then you go back to either a store procedure and a physical table. And of course, a store procedure is way more easier. You can you can put in a lot of business logic in there, of course. And if you have customers that have well a bit older data sources that might not even have modified date or doesn't even have a primary key in it, then it's really nice to have at least you know the space and the the, the options that a store procedure will will give you because you can put in a lot of queries and a lot of data cleansing integrations inside that single store procedure that is not allowed in a view. Just just that simple. Um, okay, so I'm just going to run this one and it will run in the background and then let's switch over to the warehouse. Um, I did build a warehouse uh, framework for this, so I can actually query the metadata in the delta tables in the lake house, fetch the metadata and based on that metadata, everything will be generated. And there are, there are a lot of videos uh, about this um, in the series of YouTube. You can just sit back, relax, get a cup of coffee and I think in 20, 30 minutes, um, you've seen it all, so it's really cool. Um, but for now, you see here that I have AdventureWorks as a source, uh, a data mart here based on AdventureWorks, uh, logging schema, of course, master data for static lists and, and static table data, 
Monkey Data Warehouse, which is of course um, the, the the framework that I use for generating the data warehouse. Star Wars as a source and the Star Wars data mod on top of that one. And here you can see that uh, the logging is actually nicely filled and I can show you that every time you run things, there is a source, an object status, duration of course, insert, update, delete, and an error message. And then if you zoom in to the data mart logging, and you can see here that there's an actual example that uh, that raises a throw error. So in this case, this one failed, which was of course intended. Uh, but also here you can see the duration, number of inserts, and recurrently processing uh, AdventureWorks Data Mart and the Star Wars Data Mart. So that, that's just an overview of the warehouse in like two minutes. Um, but let's go back to the daily run pipeline. And this pipeline is now still processing the lake house files and turning them into delta tables. So let's hop onto the process mart pipeline, which is of course the one that we're going to use to populate the data mart. And then first things first, first start processing the dimensions and then we start processing the facts. Um, and here you can see that it first looks up all the store procedures that have a dim prefix in it. And then for each store procedure, it executes the store procedure in parallel. And if something goes wrong, an error will be uh, written into the logging. And same goes for the facts. So first it queries all the fact related store procedures and then for each fact it starts processing things in parallel. Um, this is the only way to, to execute things in parallel, of course, because SQL or at least a SQL query or while it runs things sequential and not in parallel. So that's the reason for that. Um, well, you can see here that it actually done with converting the files into delta tables. It did fetch the existing list of delta tables that are available. And for each file that exists, it's going to process them by processing the, um, the data into the historical tables and then moving it to an archive folder. And in the end, it will process the data mart. Let's see if we can already see the results. Uh, so processing went well. Uh, we do see failure here, but that's plainly simple because uh, the file itself is not a delimited text. It's actually a Parquet file. More on that on a, in a different uh, YouTube uh, video in this series. But this one is actually being uh, is failed as intended because it's different extension, right? So the next step, it will uh, succeed, as you can see in here, and then it will move the file. So everything runs fine. Um, and as you can see here in the logging table, it did process everything again in just a few seconds. And keep in mind, of course, these are really small uh, and, and you know, not a lot of data, but it's really nice to see that it's actually running. And we do have a practical example of how a warehouse should look like or could look like on Microsoft Fabric. And of course, every single setup can be, you know, is it for a particular client or for a particular scenario, right? So there's no such thing as a wrong design or something like that. Okay, I hope it's running. Oh, it's still not processing the data mart, but um, well, it will in a few seconds, I think. Uh, let's see if I can refresh this one. Okay, it's all done. I'm going to click refresh. And there it is. Okay, final step is deleting the original file in the root folder. And basically what it does is it's moving these files. So if I now refresh this one, they're gone and they actually got copied to a new folder on the 27th of June. So which is a nice backup part. Right? You can always fetch a, a set of files, put it in a root folder, folder again, and then start processing it. Some reason something got, got wrong or failed or you need to recover things. Um, like I said, it's just an example of how things could work in uh, in Microsoft Fabric. This one is done. And it's already processed the data mart, which is really nice. So I'm just going to zoom in on this one. Here we go. So thank you for watching. Um, this was it in a couple of minutes, uh, but just to give you an overview of how it could look like. And if you have any questions, please let me know and uh, have fun. Enjoy your adventure in Microsoft Fabric and uh, let me know how things turn out to be. Bye bye.